Hello and welcome once again to joining me on my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the history of Dominica in the Leeward Islands in the Caribbean. The Arawaks were guided to Dominica and other islands of the Caribbean by the South Equatorial Current from the waters of, of the Orinoco River. These early descendants of the Tainos were overthrown by the Kalim Nago tribe of the Caribs. The Caribs who settled here in the 14th century called the island Waitikubuli, which means tall is her body. Christopher Columbus, on the other hand, named the island after the day of the week on which he spotted it, a Sunday, Dominica in Italian, which fell on the 3rd of November 1493 on his second voyage. Daunted by the fierce resistance from the Caribs and disguised by the absence of gold, the Spanish did not settle the island. Now, before I go on, I'd like to thank all my uh, subscribers and for those who see me for the first time, if you like what you hear about the history of the Caribbean and the Americas, please hit the subscribe button. In 1632, the French claimed Dominica, along with the other Petite Antilles, but no settlement was attempted. Between 1642 and 1650, a French missionary, Raymond Breton, became the first regular European visitor to the island. In 1660, the French and English agreed that both Dominica and St. Vincent should not be be settled, but instead left to the Caribs as a neutral territory. Dominica was officially a neutral territory for the next century, but the attraction of its resources remained. Rival expeditions of English and French foresters were harvesting timber by the start of the 18th century. In 1690, the French established the first permanent settlement in Dominica. French woodcutters from Martinique and Guadeloupe began to set up timber camps to supply the French islands with wood and gradually became permanent settlers. They brought the first enslaved people from West Africa to Dominica in 1715. In 1715, a revolt of poor white smallholders in North Martinique causes an exodus of them to the southern part of Dominica. They set up small holdings there. Meanwhile, French families and others from Guadeloupe settled in the north. In 1727, the first French commander, M. Lagrand, took charge of the island with the basic French government. Dominica formerly became a colony of France, and the island was divided into districts or quarters, already installed in Martinique and Guadeloupe, cultivating sugarcane. The French gradually developed plantation in Dominica for coffee. They imported African slaves to fill the labor demands, replacing the less cooperative indigenous Caribs. In 1761, during the Seven Years' War, a British expedition against Dominica was led by Lord Roland, was successful and the island was conquered along with several other Caribbean islands. After France was defeated by Britain in the Seven Years' War, it ceded the island to the British under the Treaty of Paris, 1763. In 1778, during the American Revolutionary War, the French mounted a successful invasion with active cooperation of the population. The 1783 Treaty of Paris, which ended the war, returned the island to Britain. The 1783 Treaty of Paris, which ended the American War of Independence returned the island to Britain. The French were to later invade the island in 1795 and 1805, 
but those invasions ended in failure. British colony from 1763 to 1978. As part of the 1763 Treaty of Paris that ended the Seven Years War, the island became a British possession. In 1778, during the American War of Independence, the French mounted a successful invasion, which I said earlier, with the cooperation of the local populace, which was largely French. 1783, Treaty of Paris, which ended the, the American War of Independence, returned the island to Britain Although the French were to later invade in 1795 and 1805, but well, those invasions ended in failure. The 1805 invasion burned much of Rossou to the ground, which Rossou is the capital of Dominica. In 1763, the British established a legislative assembly representing only the white population. In 1831, reflecting a liberalization of official British racial attitudes, the Brown Privilege Bill conferred political and social rights on free non-whites. Three blacks were elected to the Legislative Assembly the following year. The abolition of slavery in 1834, enabled Dominica by 1838 to become the only British Caribbean colony to have a black controlled legislature in the 19th century. Most black legislators were smallholders or merchants who held ec economic and social views diametrically opposed to the interests of the small, wealthy English planters. Reacting to a perceived threat, the planters lobbied for much more direct British rule. In 1865, after much agitation and tension, the colonial office replaced the elective assembly with one composed of one half elected members and one half appointed. The elected legislators were outmaneuvered on numerous occasions by planters allied with the colonial administrators. In 1871, Dominica became part of the Leeward Island Federation. The power of the black population progressively eroded. Crown Colony Government was established in 1896. Following World War I, an upsurge in political consciousness throughout the Caribbean led to the formation of the Representative Government Association. Marshalling public frustration with a lack of voice in the governing of Dominica, this group won one third of the elected seats of the Legislative Assembly in 1924 and one half in 1936. Shortly thereafter, Dominica was transferred from the Leeward Island Administration and was governed as part of the Windwards until 1958 where it joined the short-lived West Indian Federation. In 1961, Dominica Labour Party, led by Edward Charles LeBlanc, was elected. After the Federation was devolved, Dominica became an associate state of the United Kingdom. On February 27, 1967, Dominica formally took responsibility for its own affairs. LeBlanc retired in 1974 and was replaced by Patrick John, who became the first Prime Minister. On November 3, 1978, the Commonwealth of Dominica was granted independence by the United Kingdom. Independence did little to solve the problem stemming from centuries of economic underdevelopment. And in the mid-1979, political discontent led the formation of an interim government led by Oliver Serafin. It was replaced after the 1980 election by a government led by Dominica Freedom Party under Prime Minister Eugenia Charles, the first Caribbean female Prime Minister. Within a year of her inauguration, she survived two unsuccessful coup attempts, and in October 1983, 
as the chairperson of the Organization of East Caribbean States endorsed the U.S. invasion of Grenada. Chronic economic problems were compounded by severe impact of hurricanes in 1979 and 1980. By the end of the 1980s, the economy had made a healthy recovery, which weakened in 1990s due to the decrease in banana prices. In 1995, the government was defeated in election by the United Workers' Party of Edison James. James became the Prime Minister serving until February 2000 election when the Dominica United Workers' Party DUWP was defeated by the Dominican Labour Party, DLP, led by Rosie Douglas. He was a former socialist activist. Many feared that his approach to politics might be impractical. However, these were somewhat quietened when he formed a coalition with the more conservative Dominica Freedom Party. Douglas died suddenly after only eight months in office. On October 1st, 2000, was replaced by Pierre Charles, also a DLP. In 2003, Nicholas Liverpool was elected and sworn in as president, succeeding Vernon Shaw. On January 6, 2004, Prime Minister Pierre Charles, who had been suffering from heart problems since 2003, died. He became the second consecutive Prime Minister of Dominica to die in office of a heart attack. The Foreign Minister, Osborne Riviera, immediately became Prime Minister, but the Educational Minister, Roosevelt Skerritt, succeeded him as Prime Minister and became the new leader of the Dominican Labour Party. Elections were held on May 5, 2005, with the ruling coalition maintaining power. So ends the history of Dominique. During its history, Dominica went from Arawak Indians from 2,500 years ago to Carib Indians who came up to over the island in the 14th century to, uh, the to the Spanish, but they never actually conquered Dominica. French control in the 16th century in, in the 17th century, I should say, uh, and British control in the 18th century to their final independence in 1978. Because of this, most Dominicans speak both French and English. And I made this video uh, for my friend who comes from Dominica who asked me to do a history of his homeland. So, if you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.